We'll take a look at some further absolute value graphs in this lesson. And we'll jump straight in with an example here. Now we're given the graph for fx is equal to 2x plus 2. Now in part A we're asked to sketch y is equal to the absolute value of 2x plus 2. So we're finding the absolute value of the whole function. Now to draw a quick sketch of this, there's a couple of conditions that will really help. First of all, when fx is greater than or equal to 0, well the absolute value of fx will just be exactly the same graph. And where fx is less than 0, the absolute value of fx will be a reflection in the x-axis. Now let's have a look at each of those conditions. First of all, where fx is greater than or equal to 0. So that's where our y values are positive. So it's this part of the graph here. Now the absolute value of fx will just be exactly the same graph. So we'll just go over that there. Now for our second condition, we're looking where fx is less than 0. So that's where the y values are negative. So that would be this part of the graph down here. Well, the absolute value graph this time will be a reflection in the x-axis. So we're going to get that section of the graph and flip it or reflect it up there to the other side of the x-axis. And that's actually our completed graph other than one thing. Got to label it. So y equals the absolute value of 2x plus 2. Excellent. Well, how about we have a look at a second example. Here we're asked to sketch y is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2. Now note that in this one we're just taking the absolute value of x, not the whole function. So we've still got the same starting graph, but there'll be a couple of different conditions here. First of all, where x is greater than or equal to 0, f of the absolute value of x will give us the same graph. But where x is less than 0, f of the absolute value of x gives us a reflection in the y-axis. Now let's have a look at this one first of all where x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's this part of the graph here. Well, the absolute value, so f of the absolute value of x, is the same graph. So we'll just draw that in again. Now, the second part where x is less than 0. Now, that's this whole region of the graph here. Well, f of the absolute value of x gives us a reflection in the y-axis. But we've got to be careful, because we're actually taking this part that we've just drawn, and we're flipping or reflecting that across the y-axis. So slightly different to the method in part A. Draw that in. Well, there's our completed graph other than our equation. So we've got y equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2. Fantastic. Well, how about we have a look at a second example with a couple of similar graphs here. So we're told that we're given the graph for fx is equal to x plus 1 all squared. Now in part A, we're asked to sketch y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1 all squared. So once again, we're finding the absolute value of the whole function. So those two conditions again, where fx is greater than or equal to 0, the absolute value of fx is the same graph, and where fx is less than 0, the absolute value of fx is a reflection in the x-axis. So fx is greater than or equal to 0 first. That's where our y values are positive, so that's this part of the graph here. Now have a look at that. It's actually the whole graph, isn't it? So the absolute value of fx will actually be the same graph. We'll go over that. And that's actually basically our question completed. Because there's no values of fx that are less than 0, or no negative y values. So all we've got to do is label our equation there. Now let's have a look at part b. Here we're asked to sketch y is equal to, in brackets, the absolute value of x plus 1 all squared. So just the x itself is in the absolute value sign this time. So we've got the same starting graph, but once again, some different conditions. So this time where x is greater than or equal to 0, f of the absolute value of x gives us the same graph. And where x is less than 0, f the absolute value of x gives us the reflection in the y-axis. So where x is greater than or equal to 0 first, that part of the graph there, well, we know our absolute value graph will be the same graph, so go over that. Now, where x is less than 0, so that's this region of the graph here. f, the absolute value of x, will give us the reflection in the y-axis. But remember, we're taking this graph that we've just drawn and flipping or reflecting that to the other side of the y-axis. 
So there in blue we have our new graph, just label it, y is equal to, in brackets, the absolute value of x, plus 1, all squared. Fantastic work. Well, that's our further absolute value graphs done. Now, good luck to you as you work your way through your questions.